doesn't sound like a V6 anymore, Dave. I know. It's got a little rumble to it. We have to show you this disclaimer. This is for everybody that probably wonders why I chose to use a real Grand National versus a regular Regal. It just meant more to me to have a real Buick Grand National, just because that's what I've raced all these years. This was a car that nobody would have ever restored back to stock. I mean, the motor was gone, transmission was gone, the wiring was out of it, and it didn't even have the right rear end in it anymore. It was a Southern car, so it didn't really have any rust, but it had led a very, very hard life. It's gonna live on another life as something really special. I just don't want anybody to think I would murder a perfectly good car. Okay, well, now that that's out of the way. This is a, T8 Performance block, it's aluminum block, and uh, it has Buick Motorsports heads. Um, it has a four barrel intake manifold that's converted to EFI because nobody makes an off the shelf manifold for Buick Stage 2 heads. These heads you could actually buy over the counter from the Buick dealer. And these things were designed to run IndyCar and Bush Grand National racing in the 80s and 90s. It's amazing that after all these years, an engine platform like this, it's as old as it is, can still be competitive. But it's all due to the magic of EFI and a wonderful turbo. All right, up front, we got TRZ upper and lower control arms with their new spindles and uh, rack and everything that goes with it. This car originally didn't have rack and pinion steering from the factory. It had a traditional steering box, but we've upgraded all that because it's lighter, it's easier to package, and just a lot less moving parts. It's got coilovers with mincer shocks. Just moving around the engine compartment here, it's got a clear view filtration oil filter assembly, a uh, dry sump oil pump, a Waterman racing fuel pump, uh, ATI balancer on the front. A lot of people have asked me about the belt drive on the front uh, because they didn't make those in very large quantities for Buicks. That's a Danny B belt drive. They haven't made them for quite some time, but um, they're going to be making some more of them again here pretty soon because there's a lot of people like myself that's trying to push things to the next level. And if you're going to be doing that, running them hard and the belt drive's really the way to go. The type of boost that we run, we run a Wilson Manifolds high boost throttle body. So it doesn't leak just to help keep things going a little bit longer especially when you're spraying methanol it runs a lot of boost tbm brakes on the front they're lightweight setup spindle mount wheels welding fuel pressure regulator of course the engine management is fuel tech it's a ft600 those guys have been great to deal with precision turbo they're a major sponsor on this car we run the turbo on this we run it on cheeseburgers mustang we've had really really good service out of all that also all the plumbing that was done under the hood all the oil lines fuel lines and all that that was all done by kenny johnson at rpm transmissions did a phenomenal job those guys are the best i know they typically don't do that type of stuff for people but they made an exception for me and i'm i'm really grateful for it this car has a turbo 400 with a reed case built by rpm it's been flawless we run it as a two speed i don't know someday we might go to a three speed but right now i kind of like the simplicity of a two speed a torque converter is a ptc unit that i bought many years ago and we've tried other things but we just keep going right back to that same old converter that i bought for my grand national it's held up and um hopefully i never have to turn loose of it I'm trying to think of anything else in the front end of course 10 soldiers did all the fabrication on this car from front to back. You know, they built the headers, they built the charge pipe. I mean, pretty much anything you see on this car that's welded, 10 soldiers did it. So people have asked why I chose to go with the Buick V6. Well, it chose me. In the late 80s, I just became obsessed with these cars. My first Buick that I was ever around, I saw in a magazine, Lawrence Conley. He won a race in 1989 in Memphis. And I didn't even really know what a Grand National was. I'd seen Buddy Ingersoll run Pro Stock and IHRA about three or four years earlier. And I'd heard him talk about Buick, so I didn't know much about the V6. But after I really found out what these cars were, I conned my mom into buying one. And we found one at a dealership that was still new. It was a demo, even though it was three years old. My mom bought it and I've had that car ever since. I raced that car up until three years ago when I started driving the Mustang. And the reason that we did the Mustang was so we could get some data on what the Buick can do in a lighter weight car. Because my Grand National, I didn't want to cut it up. I mean, it had power windows and tilt wheel and all that. And I didn't want to take all that stuff off my mom's car. We decided to go down this road of building this car while we're racing the Mustang. That way we can have fun with the car and see what it'll do. And it's been a real, pleasure and 
very satisfying to run an engine platform that most people would say is not capable of being competitive in today's world. For many years, people told me, Dave, you know, you're not gonna be able to go any faster with that Buick because of parts breakage and this and that, but we just keep finding a way to make things work, make them last. I mean, we tear up our fair share of parts, but so does everybody that runs at the level that we're at. You go and make a, a pass with one of these cars and and you're like, hey, it ran really good, but then you're worried, hey, I gotta look at data, make sure the oil pressure is good, make sure that everything's holding together. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I said before, it's it's like starting a fire by rubbing two sticks together. It's not the smartest way to do it, but when it's accomplished, it's very rewarding. I've been racing my other car since 1992. That's when I bought the car off my mom. From day one, I was out street racing, going the track, going here, going there. It was my daily driver for about four or five years. And I just love these cars. I mean, I love the just the way they feel when you drive them and just they're a big car but not too big you know and they even after all these years they still command a lot of respect on the street from other people that are in the know this has been a journey i mean a 30 plus year journey you know actually yeah this year makes 30 years that i've been racing buicks and i haven't given up on it you know that's the rewarding thing is every time somebody say you can't do it made me want to do it that much more you know my goal someday is I'd love to have the fastest Buick powered car, bar none, whether it's a V6 or V8. I mean, I don't know what this thing will run in a quarter. I mean, we're shooting for mid sixes, you know, that ought to put us in the ballpark. It's gonna be a lot of fun racing this thing. You know, some people say, oh, it's, it's too pretty to race. And I kind of have to agree. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't want to get it nerdy. I don't want to fire it up because I don't want to get, you know, have to start working on it because it doesn't have a scratch on it yet. I mean, it's just perfect, but those scratches are just battle scars, you know, battle scars from great memories of when you went out and ran your best or ran a race you always wanted to go to. That's what it's all about. Now, let's see here. All right, well, this is the underside of the business end of this car. Um, this is the front of it. Look how perfect it is. Everything is just so tight and put in here and you still got the stock floor pans, which were not easy. I mean, they actually took stock G-body floor pans and flattened them out. So the bars are low, but they don't go in and out of the floor. I mean, I love that about it. We got tabs all over this car to hang weight because when you have a car that's running fast, sometimes you got to move weight to the front, all the track goes away, you're moving weight back to the back and so on and so forth. Above all, we wanted it to look nice, but I wanted to be able to work on this thing. So this has... This doesn't have a diaper on the bottom. It's actually got a drip pan NHRA mandates at. And so there's tabs here and with Zeus's, this pan will come out to where if something was to come loose in this engine, hopefully it'll catch the majority of the oil that comes out in this thing. Same thing with the transmission. We don't have the pan in it right now, but there's a pan that goes underneath here that hides the transmission. It's got a lip on it to hold anything in case something starts leaking. We went with a charcoal gray on the color of the cage and the frame just to kind of offset it from the black. And we carried that in through to the interior just to kind of give a little bit of contrast and just something a little bit different. This car has a dry sump oil pan on it and it's got a dry sump pump as well, but it's got two pickups out of the, out of the side of the pan here and one out of the back of the lifter valley. And this is all XRP hose and fittings all throughout the whole car. And this car's double frame rail. So it's got some extra bars in here, but it's, it's got a big beefy mint plate in it to help hold everything intact. I like it because it, it might be a little overkill on a car that's gonna go as quick as this, but I think it also adds a little bit of safety to the car because there's more bars in the car. So in the event of a wreck, we do have some more added level of protection. It's got a carbon fiber drive shaft from PST. I've got one of those and I've got one from B&T as well. And it's got tabs here for the Pro Jacks. I had them put some ahead of the rear end. That way we can jack it up here and drop the rear end out or go directly underneath the housing itself. How am I doing? Well, I can't, I was finally caught up shipping stuff. It's awesome. I mean, you already got it, Dave. This is your car now. Dave still says he feels like it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it. Well, 60 more payments and it's mine. <laughs> you know, when it, when it comes to the Buick, it, this is premeditated. This whole thing did not happen by accident. I mean, this was a plan from day one between 10 soldiers and myself and Cheeseburger all come together and trying to figure out how we were going to attack this, what we were going to do. And I'd always come down to the shop and I'd say, how's the car coming? And they're like, pretty good. I'm like, 
Now listen, I want this to be the nicest G body on the planet. And they'd all laugh, you know, it was just a joke that we would say, but I meant it. I mean, I was joking, but I really meant it. I'm like, hey, I want to have the nicest G body on the planet. I don't know if I have it or not, but to me it is, you know? So you always have to have a goal. You got to set a really high goal. And there's a lot of nice cars. Chan Henderson's car, Pooch's car. Those are just some G bodies I can think of off the top of my head that are just phenomenal cars. And those were the inspiration for this thing. I didn't want any stone unturned. I mean, a maximum effort deal. I mean, it's got a full floating rear end in it, you know, so which, hey, that might be overkill for a Buick V6, but guess what? You never know. You know, it's just one of those things. So it's got stock style rear suspension on the car. I could have went with a traditional Ford Link, but I just stock style suspensions, that's in my roots. I mean, that's what I like. It's what I'm interested in. This thing is just, it's, really badass it's way better than i deserve and the fan work that everybody did on this car it's just and i mean when i was thinking about how i wanted the car to be i never thought it would be this nice they just constantly amazed me you know they always would take it to one more step one more step you know back here in the back it's got mincer coilovers with cans I mean, everything's adjustable, double adjustable, you know, all these different links to be able to put the control arms in and the anti-roll bar from TRZ. It just, man, it's phenomenal. Like I said, this, this has been premeditated for a long time. I kept thinking someday, someday, someday. Well, you get to be my age and you're like, today's gotta be the day because there might not be a tomorrow. I can always go make more money, but I can't make more time. That's why this car is here. I mean, if it wasn't for my mom buying our first Grand National on a credit card, she went to the bank and got a cash advance on a credit card so we could buy that first car. Who knows, I might not even be here racing in Buick right now. So, mom, I know you're up there. You know, I know you're watching. Thank you. So, our goal is in 2023 is to run X275, which those guys are flying. I mean, they're going 14s. Most of the cars that are front runners, winners, they're all going to 14s or so. And that's not going to be easy to do, especially with the Buick V6. Do I think we can do it? Yeah, I just don't know how many times we can do it. I don't know how the engine's going to stay together at that power level. So I'm kind of going in uncharted territory. But we've ran Ultra Street for the last three years. And it's kind of funny because in 2020, when they had the open house here at Tin Soldiers, Cheese and I got the, well, at least you tried award. You know, we got the big check for zero dollars that said, hey, you broke so many parts, and but you kept coming back for more. Well, 2021 comes around. We finally win our first race and we end up winning the championship. And when I was at the award ceremony in 2021, I said, hey, we just want to let you know we're going to do this again next year. And sure enough, we did. We won John Sears Point Series and we won Ducks this year. And it was a really, uh, really big honor to race with all these people. Nice people. And I'd say guys, but, you know, Haley James runs and Becky Cram runs and Miss Buckley runs and nice people, all the racers. I'm gonna miss running Ultra Street with the Mustang, but I'm gonna enjoy the new challenges with the X275 car here. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. I know that maybe it looked easy because we won quite a bit. And it was through a lot of hard work from Cheeseburger and my wife and myself and 10 soldiers and the engine shop and just, just everybody that came together to help us in so many ways. I'm really grateful. I would love for there to be more Buick V6s in these classes. So the people that think it's easy, I suggest you go buy a Buick V6 and come on in. The water's fine. The water's fine. We can all enjoy this together. Thank you.